Anyone who has played Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 1 is immediately familiar with the Camarilla and the Anarchs. Picking sides is encouraged by both parties, and the player character is nudged to cement their ideals and pinpoint where exactly they lie. But there is another choice. Independence. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Masquerade Monday and another Vampire the Masquerade lore video. The notion of independent clans is one that dates back to the same time as the formation of the Camarilla, Anarchs, and the Sabbat in the 15th century. I made videos on all of these sects, which you can watch here. The four original independent clans were the Giovanni, the Followers of Set, the Asimite, and the Ravnos. During Modern Nights, that is Vampire the Masquerade version 5, the Gangrel have declared independence as well, its elders having formally severed the clan's ties with the Camarilla. These four lineages can claim their place as proper clans, but share a strong disinterest in getting involved in the war between other sects. In other words, they would prefer to watch from the sidelines as the other sects tear at each other's throats. Granted, individual members of these clans show up in the ranks of other sects from time to time, but the elders of the independent clans have their own goals in mind, goals that would conflict with allegiance or loyalty to a particular sect. So what goals might that be? Well, it varies, not just from clan to clan, but from vampire to vampire. Independent kindred are vampires first and clan members second. They don't all possess mindless, unwavering devotion to the ideals of their clan. Most of them focus on their personal goals first, whether or not they coincide with their clan's goals. Individual independents are always wild cards, with no sets of laws or politics forcing them into a clear, defined path. Or maybe that's just what the independents want us to think. This air of mystery has led to rumors about the independents spreading among other kindred. Some have heard that the elders of the independent clans are active in greater numbers than those that dominate the sex. Another rumor insists that one clan has an antediluvian that has been active for centuries. But there's no way to really know, is there? So what do we know? Well, we know as much as the clans want us to. And in the meantime, they continue their machinations as if there are no rumors at all, working with and against their clans in the same measure as any sect vampire. We know that the independent clans have almost nothing in common except their unwillingness to join a sect en masse, that each clan has a different role in the Jihad, and each pursues its own goals. Now, I'd like to briefly discuss the four original clans that comprise the independents. Although it should be said that really any vampire who claims no allegiance allegiance to any of the canine sects can identify themselves as independent. Should also be said that I'll be making more in-depth lore videos on these clans in the future. First, we have the Asimites, or the name they actually use for themselves, Banu Hakim. Asimites is considered to be more of a slur name used by other kindred. Considered to be murderous vampires by many kindred, the Asimites acted as independent assassins for many years, contracted by the sex or anyone who gave them blood to murder targets. Of all the independents, the Asimites are probably the most feared, both for their role as assassins and the rumors of their thirst for the blood of elders and practice of Diablerie. Although they have traditionally acted as mercenary assassins, in the modern nights, some of the Banu Hakim question whether an allegiance with one of the sects might not be more beneficial for them. This is mainly due to the Asimite Schism. Simplified, the Schism came about because of the awakening of Ur Shalgi, one of the first sorcerers and child of Hakim himself, the progenitor of the Banu Hakim clan, who brought rapid changes on the clan as a whole. The ancient Methuselah used his tremendous power to break the curse laid upon the clan, succeeding where other sorcerers had worked for hundreds of years without success. His harsh views and interpretations of the clan laws, however, triggered various struggles and discomfort. Some of the Banu Hakim joined the Camarilla after the schism, while even fewer others joined the Sabbat or became completely independent. Ultimately, however, most Asimites followed the will and the orders of Ur Shalgi. Second are the followers of Set, or Setites. The followers of Set consider themselves to be part of something much older than either the Camarilla or the Sabbat, and dismiss the idea that goals established since antiquity should be cast aside merely because some vampires started calling themselves by a new name a few centuries ago. They claim that their faith dates back to the very start of civilization. Indeed, they believe their founder was the Egyptian god Set, and that this ancient tribe is far more important than politics. 
Their clan lives and worships in secret places, and this gives them access to dark favors and a wealth of knowledge that they can offer to any vampire willing to pay the right price. Many kindred know the trap that dealing with the Setites entails, and yet time and again Canites come to them, each time swearing that it will be the last time. Each favor traded, or addiction fulfilled, brings the Setites one step closer to their ultimate goal, the resurrection of Set himself. In modern nights, they too have sought entrance to the Camarilla around the same time as the Banu Hakim, but they were rejected. Many have turned to the Anarch movement instead, forsaking their name as the followers of Set to the Ministry, and are now arming their twin weapons of temptation and subversion to bring spiritual liberation to all descendants of Cain. Next we have the Giovanni, a clan that should be familiar with any player of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. The Giovanni are the youngest clans of Cain, both a clan and a family, and they only embrace within their own family. These necromancers are known to pursue two goals learning the secrets of the dead, and acquiring mortal power and wealth. Only a few trusted elders know that their founder, Augustus Giovanni, seeks to use the knowledge and power of the clan to destroy the shroud that separates this world from the realm of the dead. As such, the Giovanni don't feel a need for sex. They survived the past several centuries all on their own, and they don't need protection from mortals through any flimsy masquerade. They have their own family to act as allies, resources, and internal enforcement, so they don't need help. What can membership in a sect give to them that they can't already get through deals, trading, and occasional espionage? Overall, the Giovanni are extremely self-sufficient and stand totally outside the authority of the sex. That, combined with their mastery of necromancy, makes many vampires very, very nervous. In modern nights, mysterious vampires called the Harbingers of Skulls have claimed vengeance on the Giovanni for reasons unknown. As more of their clan has fallen, many in the Giovanni clan have begun to wonder if maybe they had made a mistake. Maybe Augustus Giovanni had underestimated the Antediluvians. Maybe the dead would become more potent if the shroud was pulled down. Maybe Cain is real, and in the end, all of these petty plays and power moves have been for nothing but a diversion until Gehenna. The Giovanni have now joined with other members of their unique bloodline called the Cappadocian and have rebranded themselves as the Hecata. And finally, we have the Ravnos. The Ravnos are masters of illusion. Known for being wandering vagabonds and tricksters, many kindred consider them to be nothing more than charlatans who gleefully practice their arts of deception and theft. Compared to the other independent clans, they are very loosely organized, partially due to a very unvampire like wanderlust that pervades the Ravnos. They travel to Camarilla and Sabat cities alike, where most princes and archbishops have learned that it is just better to let them pass through than to deal with the headaches that come from trying to prevent them from entering. As such, the Ravnos are completely indifferent to the politics of the sex, or indeed to the politics of any kind. Many outside observers consider the Ravnos to be too chaotic to have a meaningful impact on the Jihad as a whole, and the Ravnos nod their heads and continue doing whatever they want. The clan believes that one day their clan founder will awaken and destroy all of the other antediluvians. Until this day, they wander without allegiance and see no reason to change. But in modern nights, all of that has become irrelevant as the Ravnos' antediluvian Zapathasura has risen from his slumber and has wiped out nearly all of the Ravnos clan. According to Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition, the Camarilla view the independents like this. They are clearly up to something. A trickle of these independent kindred end up joining the Ivory Tower, but too many more do as they will with no laws or society to contain them. They cannot stand up to us on their own, but they are powerful enough to shift the balance of things. The Sabbat say, these clans claim that they're free? Bullshit. They're just as much the puppets of the antediluvians as the Camarilla. No point trying to kill a Giovanni in his mansion or a Setite in his temple, but when the world ends, they'll fall just like everyone else. And the Anarchs say, these guys get it. They can stand outside the Jihad, make their own plans, and people listen. That's freedom, man. Too bad I can't trust any of these fuckers as far as I can throw them. Now I would like to hear your thoughts. Did you choose the independent ending in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines? If so, could you see yourself choosing it again in Bloodlines 2? Which of these clans, if any, would you like to see in Bloodlines 2? And what lore videos would you like to see from me next? Although there are more sects present in the World of Darkness, such as the Tal Mirah and the Ashira, I feel my lore series on the sex is now finished. But don't worry, coming soon will be 
in-depth videos on the different clans, starting with everyone's favorite hooligans, the Bruja. I make videos multiple times a week, and every Monday is Masquerade Monday, so if you enjoy what I do, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!